Near the end of block three, we started doing, you know, the Erebor scenes, like in the Great Hall. We've had some of the biggest set builds that we've had to do on this project in these last few months, which tests the salt of the crew. No department ever got a hint of themselves or went, yep, we're done on that, you know, costumes were always being designed. So it's all a bit chaotic. The amount of work was so intense and so much of it, you just don't stop. Almost every morning of the shoot, we're delivering the objects needed that day. There was none of this taking wonderful photographs in front of racks of armour completed a year before production as we did on Lord of the Rings. If you think about that time, there was incredible planning. There were three and a half years of pre-production before we rolled the cameras. Peter never got a chance to prep these movies. You can't, I can't say that, but he didn't. The sequence of events that unfolded on The Hobbit never really allowed for that. We had a couple of years with Guillermo working up designs, working up concepts. And then because Guillermo del Toro had to leave and I sort of jumped in and took over, we didn't wind the clock back a year and a half and give me a year and a half prep to design the movie I was going to make, which was different to what he was doing. You have a director who has a different vision, totally different vision of the world we're talking about. We started all over again from scratch and redesigned the movie for Peter. Cool. Yeah, well done. We were still shooting Tintin, and with little or possibly no preparation, we jumped straight into doing previs for The Hobbit. There was only a couple of weeks in between, where suddenly I was back in a gimp suit and playing Gollum for a couple of days. And a very tired Peter was coming in every day trying to put together the story. Then Peter gets sick. He's gone for six weeks. What that all eventuated in was a very short length of time just a matter of a couple of months before we started shooting. Which is impossible. And as a result of it being impossible, I just started shooting the movie with most of it not prepped at all. And action. <laughs> From then on, you're playing this huge chasing game because Peter is shooting. He's doing his 21-hour days, getting three hours sleep and doing another 21-hour day with the editing and everything else that's going on. And you don't ever get that prep time you now have to plan on the go. You're laying the tracks directly in front of the train. And that chased us all the way to the end. When we were shooting the Erebor scenes, like everything came to a head. When you're going onto a set, very complicated, and you're winging it, you've got nothing to go on, no storyboards, no previs, you've got these massively complicated scenes and you're just making it up there and then on the spot. If I was a director that hadn't had that 25 years of experience doing this in the past, it would have just been almost impossible. We would just tell the crew to take an extended lunch for an hour or so because I wanted to just get my head completely clear and be able to plot it through. I spent so much of The Hobbit feeling like I was not on top of it with the fact that I hadn't much prep and I was making it up as I went along. And even from a script point of view, Philip and Fran and I hadn't really got the entire scripts written all the way through to our satisfaction. So that was a very high pressure situation. When you're in the momentum of a film, you know, day after day you're shooting, week after week you're shooting, what you're lacking is time to think. I don't even have time to think for half an hour if I'm on the set directing because in that half an hour I've got 30 people coming up to me asking me questions so I can help everyone else but I can't help me. I, I don't get the time I need to think. There's so much to think about. The details of each day, it's relentless. You know, we shoot for a long time. And then they look up and see the dragon left to right. I was able to wing it right up until the point that I had to start shooting this very intricate battle. I couldn't wing that, really. I did need to know what the hell I was doing and have a plan. We'd started to basically shoot the Battle of the Five Armies. We were beginning to just bank a whole load of, of, of firefight elements. But the actual battle itself was a mystery to us. We didn't know what we were doing. Nothing had been formulated at all. So we were sort of waving around in the wind, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simply because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. 
I mean, there's no magical answer for it, and that's the truth of it. We had allowed two months of shooting for that in, in 2012, and at some point when we were approaching that, I just went to Zane and Caro, our producers, and ultimately talked to the studio and just said, you know what, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing now, because I haven't got storyboards in prep, and in this three months that we've now got this battle, why don't we just finish earlier? And then there was a call from Zane saying, Andy, can I meet you? where he said, look, Andy, um, I just wanted to tell you that Pete's thinking that we're going to revisit this next year. And suddenly, very suddenly, we were finishing a few weeks earlier. OK. All right, folks, so we have a plan. It was absolutely the right decision. You know, I think the, the second unit were quite shocked. You know, it was a bit of a downer for the day. But I think everyone understood the decision behind it, and no one wanted to shoot something that wasn't ready to be done. It's a little bit bittersweet, but we've all had such an amazing time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Well, we've just finished uh, the Battle of the Five Armies in two days. No, I'm only joking. Of course we haven't, because we have just started it. Uh, the Battle of the Five Armies is going to take months, we now realise. And so what that delay, any delay, gives you is it gives the director time to just clear his head and actually have some quiet time to sit and just wait for those bits of inspiration to come about the battle that you've got coming up and start to really put something together.